father being a warrior they did not live in the tadar community the, the clan that we are we are tadar and we are concentrated in villages like uh, lankloot dolo this is a little distant because he was a warrior he had lots of enemies so he went and lived in a place called ruputumtum which is around 50 kilometers from lankloot and it is in a valley and the three hills that is covering the, the towering over the valley is all his relatives so if any any enemies were, would attack him he knows they would send him signal father died my grandmother she had to live with the chacha because that is the tradition if the brother dies the other brother will become the husband but he already had two wives and then 
my grandmother was the second wife so my um, chacha said he will keep the other two wives also my grandmother was a very intelligent lady if she marries the chacha she becomes the fourth wife and fourth wife in a rank it is not very important place in the family and she also thinks that this is not a safe place because now his father is not there anymore so he takes this little boy and runs to the other village where more brothers are there to protect this little boy because if this boy dies then this lineage is over finished so that is how his mother took him to langtlot village <laughs> in that village you know there came an epidemic of this whooping cough so every nobody knew who brought the cough but then every, all the children were coughing so somebody's child died uh, two three children died and then uh, the blame went on little kanya he is the one to bring the cough and so many deaths so the custom was that you know those days they, they usually actually expel the boy or they sell So his elder sister was scared for him. Elder sister was in the village. She was scared for him. So he put him in a small basket and ran away to the uncle's, my grandmother's family's house. as he was growing he realized that he has a chacha elder brother in uh, kambang village that is another tribe another clan that is they are tai clans so he went and lived with his chacha when he was there his uh, chacha didn't have a son so he loved this boy because he is elder brother's son and got him wives two wives but little tanyang is so small his wives are so big big so who wants to wait for a little boy isn't it they ran away because his father died small you know all his father's mithuns mithuns are those uh, cow like animal which is very precious for our nishi community so something got you know there was a dispute so the base office was in yopin so he had to climb I mean, go through the mountains and jungles to come to the office to say that you know his mithun has been taken away because he was a small boy one of the servants like we call nyara mane uh, had to take him and they came to the base office and that was the first time he saw that school kacha ghar so many children studying or you know doing something so he was a very curious boy
So he just went to look what were they do, what are they doing. So when he saw that, one teacher comes out and says, you know, you know this is a school. Would you want to study? Then he said, yes, definitely. I want to join them. He was curious. He wanted to know what was happening. So he told that servant, you go back. I am going to stay. That is how he never even for a two three years he didn't see his chacha. In between school time, for some work, his chacha became ill or something like that, he said, he had to come back to the village. When he came back to the village, according to my father, he says his chacha was so upset that why did you go away? When he came back, his uncle said, if you go back to school, I am going to shoot you in the leg. I won't let you go to school. You have a wife now to keep. So how to run away? So he told his uh, chacha that, you know, this one blanket I brought from the school. If I don't give back this blanket, they are going to arrest me and they're going to put me behind the bar. So let me go and return and I'll come back. And he never went back. And he continued with his studies. And it seems my father stood first in the class though coming from there and he stood first in the class and then he was given five rupees per month as a scholarship. After class six he came down to a place called Zero that you have to walk for a, a, at least four to five days through the mountains and valleys and there were no uh, roads that time only water tracks. 97 miles not kilometer you had to walk and Four days, five days, six days, seven days, we, uh, you know, without proper Tenji camp in the jungle, our teachers camp, especially those our uh, teacher staffs coming from uh, Chennai or uh, Maharashtra or Nalakno or uh, Patna or West Bengal, they used to come and for teaching us no, after having appointed as a teacher. So we had made uh, some burden to see that our a uh, teacher must be well, you know, uh, 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 kept and uh, we must cook for them. We must wash out their clothes and their, you know, everything we used to help. And during his uh, holidays, they would carry loads for the government, like maybe rice, maybe table, maybe s anything that uh, our government settlement requires. They would carry it for days together and they get, you know, say 50 rupees, 25 rupees paid for there. And that was how they used to earn money those days. Actually, we were friends uh, from the school days. Uh, I was reading at uh, Bomdila Higher Secondary School, where uh, he joined uh, in uh, class 9 and 10. And then uh, we were together in the same hostel and then in the same room. He was a very handsome man, smart. We used to call him uh, Sunil Tata. He, in fact, did not know that his name was uh, Tanyang. 
We used to call him Sunil. And everybody used to uh, call him Jitendra because he looks like Jitendra, a smart like Jitendra. <laughs> Every student used to stay in the hostel and uh, we used to do a lot of activities from right from morning to the uh, right in the uh, uh, night time. Say early in the morning you get up, uh, go for safai work in the, around the, this thing, you prepare your food, the common kitchen, we used to have common kitchen and uh, uh, turn wise students used to prepare food, we have to bring uh, uh, firewood from the jungle, bring water from uh, uh, streams. There was no pipe in those days. So, and uh, apart from that, there was a, a lot of uh, sports and uh, games. NCC was compulsory, and he was very good in com uh, NCC too, and uh, he used to play football also. When he came to Zero, he joined NCC, and he did so well that uh, he became a sergeant major. And he would practice with his team every morning. They would go parading whole of that Hapuli town and come back. And in that process, he would go near my where my mother used to stay in a hostel where they teach weaving. He would go around near her house, near her hostel, and take turn and come back every morning drill. Kedat, Savdan. Kedat, Danemur. And then his teacher, the NCC teacher, liked him so much because he performed so well. He was taken to a regional camp of the NCC in Guwahati. There he did so well in rifle shooting, he came first. And there everyone noticed him and he was even chosen for uh, rock climbing and mountaineering in Rotang Pass in Himachal Pradesh. Then after that in 1968 or 69, he was chosen by the regional uh, NCC to take part in the Republic Day Parade. So he, uh, he got a chance to do that also in life. He knew what education was, you know, means he, he wanted to know, uh, learn, you know, and he wanted to really carry on with his studies. And as an NCC cadet also, he was also very interested in joining the army. During those days, Oronasol, it used to be NEPA. There were hardly any school in those days. We were the first uh, generation, uh, we have seen the doors of the school. So, uh, very few schools were there, only one uh, higher secondary school or high school used to be in whole district. <laughs>
In 1969-70, he was in class 10, then I was born and my mother was transferred back to uh, Koloriang, which is far away from a place called Bomdila. And Papa felt that, you know, he had now he has a family also and he has to work, so he became a teacher. He was posted in a very remote village called Th Thembang as a teacher. Because of the distance and communication problem, my mother was staying in Koloriang and Bomdila is far away. So he joined her after three years. And when he joined uh, uh, in Koloriang, he, wa he uh, was serving there as a teacher. He was my teacher and uh, he behaved like a military officer when I was a child. And uh, he just uh, uh, stood up my education from class one to class three. And uh, whenever we visit him, he always behaved that uh, like a commander. Uh, order us, you, know, you do this, you that, do that. And he always advised us, ki, you should be like this, you should be like that. Father Tanyang, we popularly known as a Pai Tanyang. Pai means uh, you know, some, something like uncle. So we even, uncle means it is common, but uh, it was a, uh, Everybody, those who were even in teachers, teachers also, his teachers also, he was known as a Pai Tanyang, popularly. So thereby his name was very popular and after becoming a teacher, he was very dutiful. He never, you know, forget to attend the classes and he controlled the students here and there and those who absent class, they have been giving sufficient punishment. Therefore, he, he was, a, you know, like a military minded, military built up men, very straightforward, neat and clean, dress also like looks like a military. So a wonderful man he was. One day he was taking class for the children, teaching them about festivals of India. In that he said that, you know, there are different festivals, Durga Puja. And then he told, he explained to the children about Christmas, how about Christ and all that. Because those days in, you know, Christianity was very new in Arunachal Pradesh and um, the government was resisting, they didn't want conversion and the indigenous faith bill also was, you know, all this problem was there. So Christianity was a restricted thing in the area. So he didn't know all these things and he was just teaching the uh, students about the festival. Then they started, there was a stir that, you know, he's a Christian, he's teaching Christian class in the school. <laughs> Those days, uh, if you want to celebrate Christmas, you want to have a mass inside Arunachal Pradesh, 
It was a very risky thing. They can be arrested. They were never given permission to enter also. So my father would, you know, take them as Mr., Miss, you know, sisters. They will never write sisters or fathers and take them in and conduct. He would be the altar boy also. He would be everything, helping them, you know. Night, night time, he'll visit them away before anybody comes to arrest the father. But somehow this Tadat Taniyang came to know about the Catholic mission and the work that is done by the Catholic mission. And uh, he uh, was a teacher. Then he said, it is not exactly as the government says. There is something different. And the Catholic Church is investing so much in uh, education, in, uh, in the welfare of the people, and so on. And, so, and he said, no, they should be allowed to come inside. He was not a Catholic, but he worked in such a way that we could come inside. Later on, he received baptism. Lots of persecution was taking place at that time. Churches were being burned, and uh, Christian properties being taken away, livestock been killed. You know, all these things was happening. So that time, these three MPs from Delhi, they came to study the area. So that time he made friends with Purno Sangma and all, and they were lifetime friends. And uh, I remember in one village, uh, people became Christians, almost all became Christians, and they put all the people in the jail, nine of them in the jail. But they remained strong. And once they had uh, put out their, uh, my photo, in, uh, advertised, saying they would give 2,000 rupees if they caught me. My mother, she was on her way to her duty. Some people, you know, waylaid her and, you know, hit her, saying that you are a Christian. She doesn't even know what Christianity, Christianity meant. Then my father, for he came down to zero because the district administration was there to find out about what happened, what wrong did I do, and all that. Then, but you know, they got transferred, both of them, to a far away place called Wakha, which is, I think, it's uh, in the Nagaland border at the eastern Arunachal Pradesh. Eh, jiro tolong ud cak kam ripa, ride 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 ki ki doko bum jela lo doi doi besar doi besar atma gue bedopin, oke kolor yang capak, kolor yang tolo soi besar gue ngameng ngejang toko lang ngusuk be ang posting ang pakiu, epe jika ngulam kristan ridu nela, ngul kristan ada ngamung tela ma. Ugu Kristen nam kang ucing mah ngam telo be kam ang buam bingga tara jang pak jang reko nyung telo kara do mi gu do pi kulang ola me pung ni ku ajang to kulang o ang ge pak ngam telo ke ang ge pak telo do pa sar mila nyi kam telo do pa me pung nyi kam telo do pa pa ini nyi buam dila lo na ai do ku telo ke ipak ngu ke so so jiro to so Ngu kamri dong lah tu. Ngu Kristen ni, gue cing mang, ngu gue kacing ya mang. Ngai ini jangnyo tak ayat. Kalau ring tu, bingga terajang pa. Bingga terajilang ya lah, mukjilah sabel lah. Nu so kalau yang so halal, nu dari tamu gue, nu gue be Kristen ri 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 mingge tu ni nama. Aru no bajio ngam kam ibu am tu lo jang tak jang nam jang catak banyak mu. Oke ngonyang ngonyang aku dah tak kalau aku Kristen ha bapa aku. Ma, so ima jiro telo dok, do de do de do de jiro telo oke oke multuk ke gue beri odd six seventy Agustus iku badi. Hmm telo kolor yang telo ke. Ma, ngulam posting mu pak alo, aduh be, Kristen ridu lang ngulam, China border be posting mu pak. Hebe jika ngul angku be, jiro tolo, jiro tolo ke, jiro tolo ke so, licking pur asong ngul yuk tabe angku. Ipak, ikubu am alo 
go bere alo kiming alo kolor yang tolo ki lo ga di ie siri kubu kasia sab aku ne e di si pai pak promosion pai lai kol tolo ke ang pak tolo ke ang kona kiming aso ngam alo be posting mere kuni kiming alo cara kona me kapa pak kapa kona bai dono gulo ang di ne ko se mega ginya hang ko malangam ba tu kula ai cari ku ne o ngam kapa kona me are no gu be na minye be binje kam Ngucing panu kristan sang mapa nu kengam cakar mingge tokola hara ngu liking pur ipak liking pur iri kunyi bolo ngunya tiket kati was tabe ngunya pai ne abong ngunya ang bapak ang basiri kunyi aku gu utola pai pai yela pai tanyang pai tanyang alaga kakar ku be cangkung talar kunyi ciku talar ga okna Nanya posting ang mabak ka latte, WTG do ko ke, ang kumabak ka, mula kiming alok ka chakar ni ko jeej banena, di sina, o karang ul liking pur ai bi bulok ka ngul lara chakar, jiro chakar, o jiro tolo fang fok ya do do pak, tolo do de do de o kuluk ka ang kuma, ang mo kuma, apa tanang ngang ngam ang rap mo kuma, do do ngo suka pinching, pinching am ka lama wak ka la ai, eritar nama tanang so. Lider malang yang am itan ogor so governor am sarlupak. He baca kengu take ma, kengu bahkan metarik ne, ritari ne kengu sakori dikurang malang kengu yupa, yuhaj pak. He beri kuna me oke so kengu do kuna me ngul alebe be do do dong supak kuna megam kengu hugulo hugulo ang ma bung ma baka ang je bung je kam ngak kege ang ma bung kuba ang ma baka. Mga kiming alo kahe niya gu udong pa. So dom ading do to zinyora alo. Mano ang mabe ngu labi. Hebe dos pa na. Okay so okay. Ugo bari ko na me. Te mabe na me ngam bintam mabe. Miting lo ang karla ho. Ate sis. And for so long ba pap. My father was not given any place of duty. He was hanging you know around what to do. Then uh. At that time, Langcloth village, there was a proposal given by the government to start a school there. But then, uh, because nobody was interested who wants to go to a remote area, so that, that school had not started. So when, when my father discovered that this proposal is there, the government has sanctioned money. So he said, he went to the district office and said, you give that responsibility to me. I will go back to my village, I will convince my brothers to give a land and build a school and I will be a teacher. So that's how he went back to his village and uh, he convinced his brothers. All his brothers came forward together. They built a shed and made two classes. Because those days there was no nursery KG. It was class one, two. While for official work he had come down to zero, there was a developmental meeting. Uh, politician, leader and public, they sit and in, the, in a community hall. In that developmental meeting, my father also attended. So certain things, you know, he didn't find it right. So he stood up and he questioned about that issue. The person sitting on top said, who are you? And he said, I am Tadar Tanyang. What do you do? I am a government servant, I am a teacher. Then that person sitting on the podium said, you are a government servant, you cannot speak. That struck in his head like, you know, why? Why can't I speak? That was the time also he decided because one side at the back of his mind he remembered that as a Christian he was persecuted. Though not being a Christian. Then now because I'm a government servant I cannot speak. So that was the two things that made him think that I have to leave this and I have to become a voice for the people. So after that was his last posting in his own village and then he became a politician, he joined the People's Party of Arunachal Pradesh. In those days, uh, politics was not known to the Arunachalpadis. There was no assembly, no panchayat. Those things have come only after 1972. Actually, that time we were the, some kind of first base of educated people. Whole state was Nifa, all illiterate people. So they, did, they have to find an educated leader. So we got encouragement like that, so we joined them. The last me, Tadar Tanyang ko ticket de dia, Congress ka ticket de dia. He was a very good friend of Rajiv Gandhi also. To usi usi zamana ka. To usi zamai pe Tadar Tanyang contest kia. To contest ka to tamping majority bezi dia. Congress ayna. 
तो दैट वाज इन द ईयर 1989 आई थिंक सो तो ऐसे करके 10 इयर्स का उनका मंत्री रहा तो उसमें जैसे अभी जो मेरा डिपार्टमेंट है पब्लिक हेल्थ एंड वाटर सप्लाई डिपार्टमेंट he is the main uh, person who has created this department they were actually the main pioneers who really lifted up you know democracy and all that for example one uh, supreme court had oh, a bendy uh, your uh, <coughs> your what's called the bonded lever so even he contributed he is the first man who contributed the, in this capital two acres of uh, land उसको दादर तैनिंग वो 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 सब के लिए सोचता था वेलफेयर के लिए वो इतना बड़ा एरिया एक फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट में अलाउटमेंट का साथ में वो दे दिया था वीमेन इशू इज़ अनादर वेरी पर्टिनेंट पॉइंट हियर यू नो इन आवर कस्टम पॉलीगैमी इज वेरी मच प्रेबलेंट हियर मैन कैन मैरी टू थ्री वाइफ्स एज दे लाइक एंड initially the tradition was that uh, that because of the economic reason because of you know having more hands on to the to the fields and you know going to the uh, you know for the agricultural purposes no so women were you know brought by the elder wife as the second or the third wife well those days women were very much suppressed you know their system here marriage was not marriage they used to buy wife after buying a wife is a wife is a item if you really see uh, what of his main contribution in the society was what about education only so like that he was also then if you look into our children also all our girls so everyone is educated well educated even his cousin sisters are educated and you know that that way i think my father showed the society especially our uh, society that you know women can be empowered aaj aadmi log दिमाग पे आ रहा है कि तादर तंग जो बोला था यही सही है अभी चाइल्ड मैरिज का तो आजकल तो कथम ही हो गया पूरा कथम ही हो गया आजकल चाइल्ड मैरिज इज नो स्पेस नो नो प्लेस इन आवर सोसाइटी ऐसे हो गया तो ऐसे करके तादर तंग का कंट्रीब्यूशन बहुत अच्छा रहा इन द फील्ड ऑफ दिस चाइल्ड एजुकेशन में आई आई एम सो थैंकफुल टू माई फादर बिकॉज of this education he has given us and today i am speaking to you i'm speaking for the rights of the women i'm speaking the the difficulties that the women struggled you know and uh, f- for this past uh, many years but comparing that life with my mother i'm so uh, uh, you know i'm so blessed i'm so fortunate that i was made to go to school i was uh, you know given the freedom freedom of choice freedom of you know to take up any profession and because of that i think i'm i'm here now talking to you and today i've been i'm any situation comes in life i can face it it's because of training that he gave me he had full confidence that this child will be able to do of course uh, uh, community has given uh, with a token of you know love and respect to at uh, other time therefore the nyapin government college has been kept in his name uh, at the moment is it because of the his on a clean image because of the, his dedication to the and in fact he has been one of the pioneers in bringing a uh, physiculture in arunachal pradesh like now like during his days only as a minister he started with uh, fish ponds which has to be built by all the department of fisheries in all the district headquarters now if you go and see fish ponds in all the districts you will see it's all his contribution in fact in his time like uh, the department of engineering got bifurcated as department of water resource department and phe public health engineering department and in fact he has been a, like he has a, played a pivotal role in fact he was the first minister of public health engineering department of arunachal pradesh and that way like, like so many contributions are there and uh, i had been very fortunate in having him as my father in law and uh, only thing which hurts me is uh, i could not have much more time to spend with him uh, like we wanted to leave him for a long long time maybe like it is maybe because good people are to live this earth faster because god is also selfish he wants good people up there so <laughs> he he just lived 55 years right from his early years from his childhood days he struggled so much he's you know fought all the you know the 
the hurdles that came across his life he has uh, you know very uh, resiliently with so much of uh, perseverance with so much of courage he has you know uh, you know overcome all those hardship and uh, and as he grew up as he grew up and as he became a leader also all those struggles that you have you know heard from my sister also even about fighting for the rights of the uh, christians and that time you know that the persecution was going on and it was not that he was christian but he saw that these people were you know so weak they were so voiceless uh, that he you know went in defense of them when he him, when he was not christian himself he did not know what christianity was all about but what he knew was that the freedom of conscience the right the, the the right choice to make you know i mean a person who who is anyone to you know stop you from that is the basic human right to even follow the religion of your own choice so he he advocated this he fought for this we had a lot of leaders the those who become a minister and mla and but exceptionally tata tanyang was the one of the ideal leader an idea teacher and uh, morally sound and having a clean you know image in throughout his life and therefore we sh we should learn from him we cannot compare his character he is a really man a different character and uh, he is a different philosophy and he has a different uh, vision and uh, we couldn't find his character uh, easily here today we have a number of politician so many literate people are there educated people are there we cannot compare him he is a different person he was a different type of you know man so far has nishi has produced till today we have come across a uh, eight nine chief ministers in this state having 100 ministers many of them no more My, among them our tadat tanang one of the most popular minister I always uh, remember him as my teacher and uh, teacher then uh, secondly think him as a military commander I would like to describe him as a loving and honest man you know I think that that would be the most preferred word I, I guess so so he was a very noble man he was a very uh, ideal uh, man so far as he has produced till today he was open to everything he he always uh, respected everyone everyone's religion he he thought that everyone has a right or right to his opinion right of his religion and everything the right to live the basic right to live so that way i think uh, all his life whatever he has done i feel that uh, he has given everything he has given his best and he has come out victorious and we are very fortunate that we are his daughters